Kim Jong-un, his youngest son and predicted heir apparent. Well, well this is a chance there, and earlier she told me about the kind of access she's been given. We are in a press room in North Korea, in Pyongyang. They've actually set up a press room for us, and there is access to the internet. Ironically enough, we have access to Facebook, we have access to Twitter, and of course, here I am able to Skype with you, uh, which is absolutely unprecedented. This number of journalists uh, being here all together in one room with access to the internet, and of course, tomorrow we are expected to be able to attend and view this military parade. But journalists are only worth anything, Melissa, if they can find out something. Are we going to be able to do that or are we just going to be, you know, fed a diet of marching bands and fireworks? I think it could be a bit of the latter. You're absolutely correct. Uh, to a certain extent, or to a very large extent, rather, uh, this is a very controlled kind of trip. After all, we were picked up at the airport, bussed to this hotel, uh, and we still don't know what our schedule is for tomorrow. There is a schedule that we have to follow. So it is a very, very uh, different kind of uh, situation that we have in Pyongyang and North Korea than you would normally would. But having said that, uh, this kind of access and and um, this kind of uh, sort of openness is all relative, and relatively speaking, uh, this is quite amazing. Are we going to see or hear any announcement about the possible succession process in North Korea? As we look at a picture there on our screen of the current leader's son, the man we're looking at is Kim Jong-un, recently promoted. Are we going to hear anything about that, or are you unable to say? No inkling uh, from anyone here so far. Uh, again, like I had said, uh, they haven't even told us uh, when things will begin tomorrow morning uh, for us to cover. Uh, but uh, there is that expectation, uh, or uh, why would they bring so many journalists uh, to Pyongyang unless they do want to make a point of introducing uh, the, uh, uh, the successor to Kim Jong-il. Uh, so that is the expectation here. Again, uh, like I said, uh, it has been a whirlwind 48 hours, certainly, for uh, journalists. They've been handing out uh, journalist visas uh, to anyone who uh, has applied out of Beijing. So in that sense, relatively speaking, uh, we are getting more information than we normally would out of Pyongyang. Yeah, we, which is very little. I understand exactly where you're coming from, Melissa, but are you able to give us a, a flavor? of what it's like in Pyongyang, your drive from the airport to the hotel to where you are, uh, what you saw, what the people are like. Well, what we saw are some of the pictures that have come out of Pyongyang in the past. Um, uh, very quiet roads, not a lot of automobiles on the roads, most people walking or cycling, a lot of uh, streets not lighted. Uh, we did see um, some uh, uh, posters and banners up uh, discussing the 10th of October, which is the date, uh, which is tomorrow when they're going to have uh, the parade. Uh, so we've seen uh, that, and that is new. And uh, we are all here in Hotel Koryo, right around the corner from from Kim Il Sung Square, uh, where the proceedings uh, will take place, and if all goes as planned, uh, our understanding is that uh, the event will also be broadcast live, and that reporters will also be able to make observations and broadcast live.